Let us pray. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, on this Mother's Day, we just want to thank you for Mama. Thank you for looking down the pages of history and realizing that we would need Mama and creating her in such an amazing way with a heart that reflects the love of God in all that she does. Lord, now as we look at your word, I ask you to open hearts and minds to hear your word and to respond to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, it's Mother's Day. How do you preach on Mother's Day without just talking about your own mom? It's, it's, you know, so I, I have my handkerchief ready just in case, you know, let me practice. Some of us grew up with many brothers. I didn't. I only know what it's like to have sisters, but in my family, I'm the only son. And if you ask my mother who's a favorite child, she will tell you, oh, I love all my children equally. But if you talk to my sisters, I talk to everybody in the family, everybody know I'm mama's favorite. I mean, she always referring to me as her one and only son, her one son. She will never admit I'm her favorite, but I'm telling you, you just watch every Sunday when I go over there to, to, for, for Sunday dinner. You should see the f amount of food she put in my plate. I'm sitting in the living room. You're one, my mother is old at retirement age. She said, son, you want anything? And she's bringing me anything I want. Fresh cup of coffee. You want more food? I mean, every Sunday I go over there, it's like there's a holiday called my one Sunday. Spoil, spoil, I go over there. Everybody know I am mama's favorite. I don't know who is your mother's favorite, but most mothers will tell you I love all my children equally. And if I begin to talk about my mother, you might form the opinion that I think my mama is perfect. Well, my mother is not perfect. No mother is perfect. But I'll tell you this. There are some times where for a few minutes or a few hours on certain special occasions, mama comes as close to being perfect as anybody ever has. Because there are times when you need a special hug and only mama's hug will do. There are times when you need a, a special encouraging word and only mama's words will do. And there are those times when you need to get something off your chest where you need to vent, where you need to cry, you need to get angry, you need to scream, you need to shout, you need somebody to hold, and, and you need somebody to just totally come clean and get your soul free. And, somebody who's, and you need somebody who's going to listen, always looking for an opportunity to help, knowing that your secrets will stay safe. And there's nobody like mama who can do it only the way mama can. Mamas aren't perfect, but there are times especially when the world has rejected you. There are times when sometimes it seems as if only mama will love you. Only mama will go the extra mile for you. There are times when mama seems almost perfect for a few minutes, a few hours, and so on. And today we set aside some time to honor our mothers. So let's begin by taking a look at the first Mother of them all, our great, 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 a hundred times, Grandmother Eve. Let's take a look at Grandmother Eve. Turn to me, if you will, to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Now, there's a whole lot of stuff to read, but so we're going to read specific verses. Genesis chapter 2, verses 7, verses 18, verses 21 and 22. Genesis chapter 2, verses 7, 18, 21 and 22. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Move on down to verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Verse 21 and 22. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up its flesh, the flesh in its place. Verse 22, then the rib, the rib bone, which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look at this text, 
it says man was made from dust, but woman was made from bone. It doesn't take much for you to realize that bone is stronger than dust. Now, I don't know if God is saying that to say he made women from stronger stuff because he knew that after put up with all the mess we guys would give him. All the stress and crazy stuff for them to get. So God made women of stronger stuff. Could that be the reason? No, there's no way. That couldn't be it. That couldn't be it at all. But I did some research. You see, I found it interesting that God said rib bone. If you spend enough time reading the Bible, one thing you'll learn is that God doesn't waste any of his words. He's very specific. He has a very specific purpose for every word. Now, God could have said he just, he made Eve. Or he could have said, I made Eve from one of Adam's bones. But God was very specific. God said he would made Eve from Adam's rib bone. So I did a little research on the internet, and here's what I found out about rib bones. It says, the internet says, I'm not a doctor, so if there's any nurses in here and I'm wrong, just raise your hand. But this is what I found on the internet. The rib bone, the rib bones that make up the rib cage, you know, this whole framework around your chest here, the rib bones make up the rib cage. The rib cage is a, made up of rib bones on the body, and the rib cage is one of the body's best defenses against injury from impact. The rib bones are flexible yet strong. The rib cage protects the major vital organs such as the heart, the lungs, and the liver. When you look at the description of what a rib bone does, doesn't that sound a whole lot like what mama does for her family? Yeah, you wonder, is God sending us a message? As if God designed her with a purpose. God wanted us to know that he made mama, he made grandma Eve, he made women from the rib bone of man because all too often, Mothers are the best defenses of their family, especially when daddy's off at work. Mothers are the ones who are often protecting their child from injury. You ever seen how a mama, mamas do the injury thing so well that when you, when a kid gets a boo-boo, they want mama to kiss it. Something about mama's touch that makes it better. Mo mothers are so good at being flexible and strong, very often because they have no choice but to be flexible and strong. Mothers are often the ones who are protecting their kids and their family from all kinds of pain and problems and disasters. I'm glad that God went as far as to specifically say the rib bone. Because if he didn't say the rib bone, some people could get it in their head that uh, Eve or women were made from a foot bone with the intention for, the God, for men to walk on them and step on over them and trample on them because that's not what women were made for. They were not made from a foot bone to trample on and step on and keep down on the foot. No, God made them from a rib bone. Now think about it. A rib bone is right by your heart. A rib bone is right by your heart. So isn't God giving us a message that we are to treat our sisters, our daughters, our nieces, and our aunts, and our mothers, and our grandmothers in a special way? As if you care for them from the heart. Now, some of you might be wondering, why am I focusing on Grandma Eve? Because we all know that she messed up really, really badly. It is true. If that's Jesus calling, I need to talk to him. We all know from Genesis chapter 3. That the record shows that Grandma Eve messed up really, really badly. And from the way some people talk about it, it's as if Grandma Eve never did anything good at all. Every time you hear about Grandma Eve, you're hearing about the mess that she made. Jesus must have really wanted to talk to me. And when we look at the scriptures, it's very easy for us to remember that. So when we look at the scriptures, I want you to realize that, yes, she did mess up. But if we pay attention, we will see that there was some good along the way. And I wonder if there's some women in here who, like Grandma Eve, made a mistake, made a bad decision some time ago. And ever since that decision, no matter what they have done and no matter how many years have passed, as if their entire life has been defined by that moment, they can never live it down. They can never move beyond that. I want you to know that even though Mother Eve messed up really, really badly, Father God didn't get rid of her and make another one. And we see no evidence that Grandpa Adam divorced her and asked God for another wife. God didn't throw Eve away, even though she messed up badly. And Adam didn't throw Eve away, even though she messed up badly. So if you have a mother or an aunt or a sister or a daughter or a grandmother somewhere in your life who has done something so bad, the time has come for you to forgive her. The time has come for you to forgive her. Why do I say this? Because Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, 
For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. You know, I remember, well, let me put it this way. Maybe what I'm about to tell you is true. Maybe. Just this might be true. When Pastor G was a little boy growing up in Jamaica, maybe I had a habit of buying a lot of candy on my way home from school. And maybe I got really fat because of it. Maybe. No, I said maybe. This might be true. So every evening I save up my lunch money and I go stop by York Pharmacy and buy pocketfuls of candy. And I mean, so much candy. Back then candy was cheap. I'd be munching candy the whole way home. And my mother began to realize, you know, if he keeps this up and he gets any fat, he's going to have health problems. So my mother grabbed me aside. And, no, I said, maybe. This, this might be true. And said, boy, under no circumstances are you to buy any more candy from York Pharmacy. So the next day I bought candy from the gas station across the street. When the Bible says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If there's some people in here who are angry at their mothers and want to stay angry at their mothers, and they say, I'm going to listen to those verses the way a mischievous boy would listen to it. The verse said, for if you, are, if you forgive men, it didn't say women, it didn't say mothers. So that means I can remain angry at my mother and still consider myself a good Christian. I say to you, you know very well what God meant when he said that. I've heard stories of some very painful things that some mothers have done. The time has come for you to forgive them. The time has come for you to forgive them. And why should you forgive them? Because Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 15, But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. You ever sat down with a mother who's grieving, regretting the decision she made? And not getting any forgiveness from her children. The time has come for you to let it go. But getting back to Genesis chapter 3. Yes, it is true that Mama, Grandma Eve messed up. And when we read Genesis, it's very easy for us to so focus on the mess that she made. That we can totally overlook the good things that she did. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 3. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed, well actually I think this is the way the serpent said it. Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 2, And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. When we look at this text, we know right coming up after this is the rec record of the how Mother Eve messed up. And because of the significance of her mess, it's so easy to get blinded by that mess. You never stop to consider the good things that she did. I want you to realize some good things that she did right here. First of all, I remember right now two particular incidents that took place. Two really bad incidents that took place. Incidents that when I, if I told you about it, you'd probably say, mm -hmm, the devil was behind that one and the other one. And when it happened, even though I'm a man, I froze. I did not know what to do. I couldn't handle it. It was bad. It was messed up. But right here, we see Mother Eve, the very first person in all of creation to face the devil. The big, bad devil. There is nobody bigger. There is nobody badder. And Mother Eve is faced, first person in recorded history, dealing with the devil. Now, I know most women, if they see a snake, they gone. If they see a roach, they gone. If they see a rat, they gone. Can you imagine a snake talking to you? Most women, if they even see a lizard 10 feet away, they ain't coming back in that room unless they see proof he's dead. But right here, we don't see Mama Eve running, scared, screaming, screaming or nothing. She stood up to the devil and to his face told him exactly what he didn't want to hear. She stood up to the devil and quoted him God's word. How many women you know can do that? 
What we see here is evidence that Mother Eve knew her Bible. She knew what God said. She knew what God expected. She knew, and even though she was facing the biggest, baddest of them all, she didn't flinch. She didn't get scared. She stood up with a backbone and told the devil exactly what he didn't want to hear. I wonder how many of us have some roughneck mothers who ain't afraid to plead the blood of Jesus over their kids, who ain't afraid to tell the devil, get to step in and leave my kids alone. I wonder how many of us have mothers who know the word of God. And the only reason why we know about Jesus is because mama knew the word of God. Do you realize the significance of what mama Eve is doing? She was faced with a serpent. And she looked him in the face. I told him exactly what God said. You know who else did that throughout history? When we look through the pages of the scriptures, we see in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus three times doing exactly that. The biggest and the baddest of them all came to Jesus, and four times Jesus told him to, him face, told him to his face exactly what God said. Okay, fine, Mama Eve only did it once. But she was outmatched. She was outclassed. There was no way she could handle the devil, but she didn't scream. She didn't run. She didn't curl up. She stood up and told the devil to his face. Exactly what God said. And you know the funny thing is? Read it carefully. She did it all alone. Adam didn't help her at all. She did it all alone. Adam didn't help her at all. I wonder how many mothers find that they have to do it all by themselves. They have to face the challenges of this life all by themselves. Because daddy's not there for good reason or bad. How many of us have mothers like Grandma Eve facing an unknown, unexpected, big, bad, scary situation. And she did it on her own. And her first instinct was to quote God's word. Some of us got some roughneck mothers who ain't afraid to face down the challenges of this life. I got a roughneck mother like that. If any of you know Bethel Baptist Church, Kingston, Jamaica. The church that's just a little bit up from the clock tower in Halfway Tree. If you know anything about that church or you have any contacts with the administrative office, go to the administrative office and ask to speak to one of the really old school deacons or the, the, the pastor who just retired, Reverend Birchell Taylor, and ask them about Mama Gallimore. What they'll tell you is that back in the 1970s and the, the 1980s, with all that gun violence in Jamaica, my mother was not afraid to lead one church mission after another to the most dangerous ghettos in the country, where all the bullets were flying, where all the crime was taking place, to bring help to those in need. I wonder how many of us got some really roughneck mamas. My mama went down there, and she was trusting in Jesus. We tried to stop her, and she went anyway. She took all the fancy, high-profile church ladies down into the most dangerous places to do God's work. Because she said, if God sent me, ain't nobody can touch me. I wonder how many of us got mamas like that who will stand up and face unspeakable odds to bring help to those in need, especially if it's their children. Yes, Grandma Eve messed up. Yes, Grandma Eve did some things that have basically defined her life. But if we take a moment and look, we will see that right there, there is evidence that Grandma Eve was a good mama. She did some good, and we need to give her credit for it. You know, I don't know what you call your mama. I don't know what you call her, but there's a section of the scriptures that is often read at weddings. And I'm going to read it. And I want to see, as I read it, if you can identify which verse describes your mother. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and following reads, Love is patient. Love is kind. Some of us got some really patient mothers. Some of us got some really kind mothers, not just to us and to our friends, but to the people in the neighborhood. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love is not proud. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Some of us got some really humble mothers behind the scenes doing all kinds of stuff to make sure we can go to school, to make sure we can eat, to make sure that we can have what we need, even if she has to do without. Love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks 
no evil. Sometimes the only person you can run to in a crisis is mama. Sometimes the only person who can bring peace in a home is mama. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, endures all things, hopes all things. Love never fails. Were you able to identify your mother in any of these? Now, I know for most of us, when we think of mother, we think of expectations. Ain't nobody can drop an expectation on us like mama. And she does come up and Satan and expect you to do it. And even though you protest, you find yourself doing it anyway. It's not just you. Jesus had the same thing too. In fact, if we look in John chapter 2, if we had a time to read where Jesus turned the water into wine, he, that happened because his mama dropped an expectation on him. Some of us have mamas who can drop some serious expectations on us. Like my mother will just bring her friend's computer over and say, oh, don't worry, my son will fix it. Sometimes I have to buy parts. Oh, no, don't you dare tell my friend you have to buy any parts. Oh, no, 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 none of that. I already told her you would fix it. Mamas are good at that, eh? But you love them anyway. I wonder what you call your mother. I call mine mommy. If any of these names match yours, raise your hand while I say it. Mommy. Mom. Mom. You know, with a U. Okay, one over there. Mommy. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, don't take this the wrong way, now, but some people do it. Mother. <laughs> okay. M with an O, mommy. With an O, not with a U. Mommy. Okay. Uh, ma. Okay. Mama. Ma. <laughs> some, some, some people have a few other names that go along with it. But it doesn't matter what name you call your mama. Chances are there's love behind that name. Chances are that word means love. You could replace it with love in any sentence because so many times, even with all of our expectations, even with all of the special ways some of our mothers behave because let's admit some mothers are not always as wonderful as we'd like them to be but they're still your mama and you only got one even Jesus had a mama the word mother implies children the word mother implies a parent-child relationship the word mother implies caring and protection nurturing and guiding the word mother implies teaching, guiding, encouragement, and discipline. Yes, yeah, some of you can still remember those. You know, it's almost better to get sparked by daddy than mommy. Mother, the word implies expectations. Dependability. When you can't depend on anybody else, you can depend on mommy. Love is a key word for mom. Because even when the whole world has turned its back on you, almost all of us can still go running to mommy. And last but not least, the word mother implies birth. The word mother implies someone vital to a newborn. Yes, there are mothers who didn't actually give birth. But in a larger scheme of things, when you use the word mother, it usually involves giving birth, new birth, nurturing a child, something new. And speaking of a new birth and mothers, John chapter 3 comes to mind. Because like you say, if you know anything about my mother, my mother is 100%, no questions asked, Jesus freak, inside and out. My mom is all about God. 100%. So I don't know if the reason why I'm my mom's favorite is because I'm a preacher and my mom's all about God. So because I'm serving God, I became mama's favorite. I don't know if that's the reason why, but there's another gentleman in the scriptures who I'm sure his mama was real proud of him. His name was Nicodemus. 
real proud of him because he was not only a Pharisee, one of the leading rulers in Israel, but he was one of the key religious leaders of Israel. He worked in the temple. So I'm sure his mama was real proud of him because to become a Pharisee, you basically have to have a PhD in the Old Testament. So she would have been proud of her son. My son is highly educated. My son is part of the ruling class of Israel. My son works in the temple. He's a religious teacher. He leads people in the ways of God. I am sure Nicodemus' mother was really proud of him. One day, Nicodemus went to talk to Jesus, and I'm sure he had all kinds of questions. When you look at John chapter 3, uh, Nicodemus was basically setting Jesus up to ask him all kinds of questions. For all we know, he was going to ask him all kinds of questions about the amazing miracles Jesus was doing, but Jesus didn't give him a chance to finish. Jesus cut him off. And in John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, here's the thing. Nicodemus didn't understand it. It didn't make any sense to Nicodemus. It should have made sense to Nicodemus because he had his PhD in the Old Testament. Nothing Jesus is telling him is not found in the Old Testament. He should have fully understood what Jesus said. But you see, you have to understand, he was already a Pharisee. He was already working in the temple. He was already a religious leader. He was already a religious leader in a, in a, in a country that is God's chosen people. You can't, how are you going to tell this man he's not going to see the kingdom of God? So he clearly misunderstood it because look at what he said next in John chapter 3 verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? So not only did he show that he didn't understand it, he insulted his mama in the process. He's lucky he didn't have a Haitian mama or a Jamaican mama or an African-American mama because if one of them heard him talking about going back into his mama, a big grown man, he'd have probably lost some of his teeth. Nicodemus, highly educated man, did not understand what Jesus was saying. But I want you to focus on what Jesus said to him. In John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, I say to you, I say to you, Jesus wasn't talking to anybody else. Jesus wasn't being symbolic. Jesus was telling him as plain as day. Nicodemus, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I wonder what would happen if Jesus said that to you. Would you form the opinion that because the, the nation I'm from is a Christian nation, of course I'm going to heaven. Of course I'm going to see the kingdom of God. Would you form the opinion that the, the, the family I'm from is a Christian family, so of course I'm going to see the kingdom of God. Would you form the opinion that my mama is Christian, so basically the whole family is Christian, and uh, said, so of course I'm going to see the, the kingdom of God. Uh, that's not what Jesus said here. Jesus looked at somebody who had all of the credentials, more than most of us have, working in God's temple, and looked him in the face and said, You, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If Jesus found reason to say that to a Pharisee, a religious leader, teaching God's word, is it possible Jesus would have reason to say it to each and every one of us? Unless you are born again. You cannot see the kingdom of God. If it's possible that there's someone here who didn't understand like Nicodemus, let me try and explain it to you. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It doesn't matter who you are. You are not perfect. The Bible says in Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus made it, the Bible makes it real clear in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10. If you declare with your mouth, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. This is not what mama believes. This is not what your family believes. This is not what your school or your country believes. It was talking about you specifically. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. 
And in Mother's Day, the topic is love. And the final verse is all wrapped up in love. In the very God who gave us mothers to love us so much. John 3.16, Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I wonder if on this Mother's Day, if there's anyone who has never given their life to Jesus and today on Mother's Day wants to repent of their sins and give their life to Jesus. Let's all bow our heads and everyone pray. Nobody looking around. If today God is speaking to your heart and today you want to give your life to Jesus, raise your hand where you are. Anybody? 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 Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, today, Lord, I want to come before you thanking you for mothers. Thank you, dear Lord, for sending Jesus, the son of a, of a woman, Lord. The woman that you handpicked from heaven, one who found favor with you. Lord, we want to thank you for sending Jesus through a woman, a mother who loved and cared for Jesus so he could grow up and preach to the world to tell us that we need to repent of our sins and accept you as Jesus Christ. Lord, if there's anyone here who is ready to give their life to you, Lord, have them pray this prayer after being in their heart. Dear Jesus, today I repent of my sins. Dear Jesus, today come into my heart as Lord and Savior. Dear Jesus, today I choose to believe that you died on the cross to pay the price for my sins. And that on the third day, you rose from the grave to sit at the right hand of God to intercede when I mess up. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen.